Acid Truck Rescue. Well, I failed you. I failed everything. Uh, I worked as late as I could last night and it was pitch black when I put my tools up. And I was cold. I want my mom. And uh, I was wet. And, and I was tired and my, and my back was hurting. But I did get some stuff done. Uh, part of the problem yesterday was that I was getting my winches set up. These are my winch boxes that I had made that I designed mm -hmm. with uh, my six winches that are remote controlled. And I'm trying to make sure that when I actually fire everything up and start raising this section of the building that I don't have any... Uh, one or two hour sidetracks while it's hanging there. I want to make sure that I and you know the best laid plans It doesn't always go the way you want anyways So I was setting all this stuff up because I have to put new connectors on the ends of all these to hook them to the batteries That one's tended Time to tend to this one. I've been keeping all my batteries up. They're all lively except the two I had to replace anyway I was making sure I had everything. Each one of the winches has to have a snatch block. So I went and looked at all of them, and one of them was missing the snatch block. So I went ahead and tore apart my tool trailer. I have a covered trailer that I keep my tools in. Tore it completely apart. I'll never be able to find anything ever again in there until I tear it apart. And I'm trying to get away from organizing places like that because I'm hoping to be organizing here tools and stuff anyway uh, that's it's very exciting and I hope you're having a good Thanksgiving I don't know if I'm even gonna have this up I don't know if you'll be watching this because I can't really be bumping my gums about raising a building that if I don't get I'm gonna get it raised thank you Lord anyway uh, so I'm, after I tore everything apart and looked for about two hours for the other snatch block and I also searched my entire shop in the box and uh, I came back out here and picked each one up each snatch block like, like this this is how they're laying right and I picked up the last one and there was a snatch block under it so we have six snatch blocks say six snatch blocks real quick six times and say real quick six times after you say six snatch blocks. I don't know. So I'm gonna go over everything with you. I've got, I think I've got everything laid out. Now, I did just, mm, it's cold. The, the sun was threatening to come up, but I don't know where it went. Anyway, I'm gonna take you around, show you everything. But I got to looking, and we got nine posts there that are gonna be holding this section of the building up. Well, six of the nine are twisted. And this is something that happens, that I've heard it commonly happens. Even after people get buildings up, they twist. But you got to deal with it. We didn't deal with it right when we put the first section up. I got lucky on the center section. None of them were twisted. Wow, that was nice. Anyway, the first section that Lou and Jim and I put up, which is behind you, there were some seriously twisted posts and we didn't deal with it until we were up in there. And I don't know why, but it was really hard dealing with it with the section of the building in the way and around the posts. So what I'm gonna do this time is when I go up in the bucket truck and put each winch box on top of each post, I'm gonna take my measuring stick, which I showed you already, and lay it next to each post where I can grab it when I'm in the air and see right where the bottom of that truss is going. I'm gonna mark that. I'm gonna put a piece of Gorilla Tape all the way around it. Previously, we put a nail sticking out where it was supposed to be, and it's really hard from the ground to judge when the bottom of the truss is level with that nail. So I'm gonna put a band of tape all the way around it so we'll see the truss actually go up over where it needs to be and then we'll get it perfectly lined up but that's also going to tell me where the truss is going to be sitting on the post and when it's twisted like that so your post is supposed to be like this 
and it gets twisted like that but your truss is coming in like this and it's not like that so you have to cut corners we're cutting corners but it's something you have to do we're cutting the corners off of that twisted block so that the truss can go straight on there if that makes sense but I'll show you when I do it anyway I'm gonna go ahead and do that as I put the winch posts up anything that I can get done up there before the buildings hanging from all these cables is a bonus now I don't know if I'm gonna get this done today I want to uh, it's very important to me I worked very hard yesterday it's endured I endured and it's early I've got the whole day ahead of me I've got everything lined up set up I think I have everything I need and uh, I'll show you what I what I have and what I'm gonna do with it this helps me if I go over this stuff okay what am I doing first and what tools will I need for that and what materials will I need for that then I find out like I was getting ready to do this video and I went over it mentally in my head and I had the bolts that go through the posts up on the corbel blocks and uh, I realized I didn't have the sockets or the impact driver to put those in I did get a new drill for drilling through the posts uh, but I went and got them so I think I have everything that I need <laughs> but it, no I I'm not even gonna say that I believe I've done a good job of gathering almost everything I need but let's go over it and see so I got all of the purlins whacked off so that half of the purlin block is still exposed for the next set of purlins that will go from here to that section up there and I got my hurricane brackets installed all of my hurricane brackets which is really important I'm glad I didn't forget to put those on that's these guys right here well you saw me do it but they're all in which is nice and I fixed this corner up here that was really jacked up the whole purlin block was twist I still have to put a purlin block in there but I've got the purlin and the bird block back where they go now that's my worst post right there and so what I'm saying is up there I'm gonna have to go whack whack and this is so twisted that I will actually have to add a piece of wood on each side to give it the girth that it needs now if you look right here all of the posts seem to be straight this way and I know you can put a string line on it and we will do that but right now I'm trying to get the section up that end post the third one two three you can see that it dives in at the top and you don't really notice that while it's laying on the ground because the posts start getting real weird the higher you get up and so when I do get it raised up I'll have to take my jack or uh, my tractor or something and pop that one out just a little bit before I secure the end of the truss to it I got lucky here they all seem to be see if you can get them to hide behind one it's pretty good but they all seem to be pretty straight as far as that way lined up wise and that's important but I got really lucky over here I think I think yeah these guys are like total they're soldiers they're they're waiting they're like why, why aren't you raising the section yet and these two I got lucky on because they're straight all the way up and down which is good there's only two out of the nine no three out of the nine that are like this but that helps anyway so going over what I'm gonna do today and what I need the first thing I'm gonna do is put my cross bracing on so I got the lumber for that just gonna put a, a 14 footer diagonally going that way one going that way I'm not going to the very ends and I'm not going to the very top I'm gonna go in the middle and then same thing down there so it'll be four 14 footers diagonally bracing this uh, for that 
I will need my screw gun. I'll need those four 14 footers. My screw gun with, I might as well just, you know, do my thing. So I'll need that. And then I got, I loaded up on supplies, folks. I'm keeping my batteries charged too. Those two are charged. Uh, need to determine the best size of screw. I think three and a half is a bit overkill for, I think that's a little overkill for the bracing. But I do want the bracing well attached. Well attached. It's harder to do stuff with one hand, folks. I know, I could put my cap cam on. But I think these two and a half inchers will be about right. You want to grab some meat, but you don't want to... That's pretty good. I think. Yeah. We'll use the two and a half inchers for our bracing. Okay, so we got everything to put... Oh, and clamps. Clamps. Where's the clamps? Oh, I put them over there. There's the clamps. We use the clamps, put the braces where they're going, and then screw them off. So I've got everything I need for that. After we get the cross bracing in, I'll be going over to that corner and putting the winch can on top. So, okay, I do have stuff left to do on the ground. On the ground, I have to put new ends on all of these they had little tiny ends and little tiny screws and i just whacked most of them off last time when i took them down but these sat on the post for like a year and they rusted <laughs> and they rusted they used to have numbers on them so you know this one controls that winch and this one controls that winch so what we're gonna have to do is i got uh so we're doing it like this starting in the corner down there one two three four five six so we got to find out which one's number one so i will put all the new ends on there oh there's 13 in there that's plenty i only need 12. uh i did already get my wrench and my socket that can fit in my impact for putting all these nuts and bolts on and those are a lot bigger and they'll fit through there easily so I've got everything I need to put the new terminals on and then also on the ground after we get all the new terminals on I'll hook each of these up to a battery and I will find out which remote works it and then I will mark each one which is which because these might get used in the future you never know and no you can't have them when i'm done i've had sorry but i've had a lot of people ask me if they can have these when i'm done well you don't need them when you're done well you know i kind of spent a lot of money on the winches and uh i may not be done building buildings out here got the winches got the connectors got the batteries got the remotes we're good in winch land i'll need the sawzall for shaping up the posts when I'm up there. Um, and I'm gonna use the white tape to mark where the trusses are gonna sit. And then we'll be needing to put in the corbel blocks. I've got lots of nails, nail gun, compressor. Compressor's already driving the hose. So we're good for nailing the corbel blocks on. I have the corbel blocks sitting at the base of each post. And then we'll need to drill through the corbel blocks and the posts to put the bolts in. So we got the bolts, got the impact and the socket for tightening the bolts. New drill is in the bag right over there on the tailgate. New drill bit. Okay, so that's everything, I think. And then we'll be remoting and going up got my stick this stick right here is already set to the height that each truss needs to go up the post from the top of that block 
so I'll just need to set this measuring stick beside each post before I go up bucket truck got my harness already hooked up to the bucket fuel in the bucket truck keys got those that's it I think that's it folks I think I have everything I need I think the planets are aligned oh and also I got something else for you mc7 this is mcfly number seven he's been doing real good it was mc6 it's actually my sixth drone and uh and it went into the stream and i went on a rescue mission and i don't know if i showed you that or not i pump out so many videos i don't even remember what i told you but this went into in the stream we rescued it and it's been working flawlessly ever since and so we'll get some mcfly footage mc7 from the heaven and uh as we're going up i'll put him up there and he can just hang out i'll get all his batteries charged up and and uh it'll just be you uh, all of you and thank you i'm thankful for my viewers i really am you guys encourage me you motivate me and even even the, the snooty comments even sometimes you know unless they're just mean if they're just mean well you probably aren't watching unless you're doing it under a fake youtube name but anyways uh i appreciate all my viewers i'm thankful for you and i hope you're having a good thanksgiving but i gotta get this up because it's getting dark and it's morning it's morning time out here folks i gotta go i have to have i've got power right there and i'm gonna extend it a little but then i have to unhook everything that's kind of like building site central over there and when you unplug it you unplug stuff that's charging and everything one thing i have noticed about this bucket truck is it has outlets and the last time it had issues we bypassed some stuff anyways this is just basically a huge hydraulic powered generator on the front of it and there was a valve that went bad on it i'm not a hydraulic so ologist so but i had a friend who was one come over and help me with it and basically we've got it set up to where you probably don't want to take it down the highway set up like that but as far as driving around here and doing what you need to do it's fine and all of the bucket controls most of them are all electrically controlled there is behind that metal panel there is the biggest scariest spaghetti factory wiring thing switches and just crazy absolutely crazy it's best to never have to open that although i've had to and i actually did fix some stuff in there everything works it's still swinging but i've got it tied off it's fine uh and i've got my harness set up but there's a outlet right there and i'm wondering if it'll power because that makes sense to me you know this thing was built back before but he had cordless everything so maybe the guy up there in the bucket you know needed a little power and if i could just have power hanging in the bucket how sweet would that be i could just run the cord over drape it over that hook and coil it up and put it there and just make sure that i don't extend -o and forget to unwind oh thing make sure i don't do that let's see yeah that's just like that's a good old test so it's got to be the reset hopefully it's all resetted wouldn't that be nice wouldn't that be something to be thankful for there's a lot to be thankful for people you know all oh, the days are hard sometimes they've been hard for me sometimes and they're probably hard for some people right now but there's always something to be thankful for all right say prayer say quick prayer just say work <laughs> come on man oh Oh, that's not good, Ed. Oh, what are you doing Friday? Friday? I don't know. 
charging the battery in my bucket truck, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you and I need to go fishing. Oh, well, we might be able to do that. I'll think about that. I will think about that. Where you think you want to go? I don't know. We can go to Silverton uh, Reservoir. We can go over to the ponds. We, we did pretty good last time we went to Silverton. But I got to get back to work, brother. I'm trying to get this uh, last section of my building up in the air before Thanksgiving. Hold on. Hold on. Stay on for one more second. Let's see if it starts. Oh. Uh, that's all right. I got the commercial charger over here, and I got power out here. We'll get her. We'll get her going. I'm glad I just. Anyway, yeah, I'll get a hold of you, brother. All right. I love all right. You. Love you. Bye. Bye. Maybe I need to prime this thing. Hello. You know, before I go hooking this back up to anything, I'm gonna go see if I got power over there. That'll work. That would be something to be thankful for. Ugh. This old equipment's cantankerous, but Good equipment. I'd, I'd be helpless without it. I'm thankful for the equipment. Thank you, Lord, for the equipment and Terry. Thank you. <laughs> Are you there, folks? I'm thankful for that. Portable power. Run the cord to the bucket, and you're good to go. Sweet, thank you, Lord. That will be very helpful. Yes, indeed. And I can go ahead and hook Job Site Central back up. I can have all my stuff, all my toys working over here. Yeah. That's what. That's what. Well, that's great. That's great. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, everything hooked back up over here. Now it can just stay hooked up over here. Get my pulse charger. 
back to work tending the winch batteries. Yep. Oh. And I'm going to take a little break before I get going, folks. And we'll move this guy over back to the beginning. I just keep moving it between them. All right. We'll leave that on autopilot. All right. So my bucket can get attached. I'm going to take that break I was telling you about. I'm going to do that. I'm going to takey that breaky. leave myself plenty of slack on this there's my power that's sweet Just gotta remember to keep an eye on that there's my white tape to mark the posts where the but to the truss go. This pole is already taped in place there to show me where the bottom of that truss is going to sit. That'll be fine. as easy as you think it's going to be.
sometimes you just have to pause and think things over. Sometimes the answer is very simple. What happened with the ladder there? That's what I was explaining the other day or in the last video on the building. I was telling people that I get a good workout working on the building and that one of the exercises was molehole dodgies or something like that. The ladder falls into the mole holes all the time. There's nothing I can do about that. It just happens. But it, I'm not very high off the ground. I can, you know, I'm all right. Anyway, it kind of hurt my forearm when that board fell down and hit it. But I have a solution. Going to keep going. See if I can avoid that mole hole. Do the letter. I'm gonna test it out for you. Alright. I think I got this. Yeah. I'm gonna make this easy on you. I'm gonna make it easy on me. That's helpful. That is helpful. So that's one section cross braced. I'm basically going to do the same thing to the other three sections and I'll be back when we're ready to go over to the winch boxes and put new terminals on all the leads. I'm, I might get it done. It's, all, it's, it's about noon o'clock right now folks and I'm willing to work into the night tonight. Putting those cross braces in it's just like everything else on this building. A, some of it I have to learn, and uh, practice makes perfect. So a lot of it's repetitious. It's stuff that you have to do over and over again. And, you know, you just try to do it. And when you're failing miserably, you start thinking of better ways to do it, like using a chain to hold all the way to the board in the center and uh, while I put the clamps on. And, as you continue doing those repetitious things, you, it gets smoother and you learn more ways to do it better. So when you get all frustrated and you're like, oh no, everything's not going right, focus on what you're doing right then, the task at hand. Focus on that and how can you get that done. And then pretty soon you look and it's done. Let's get her done. was easier.
would have cross raced those other two sections when we raised them. I can see where it makes a big difference. I didn't know anything about cross racing then, but we should have done that. It would have saved me a lot of grief. and two to go. down, one to go. You guys took an unscheduled time out on me. I had to go get you another battery. We're almost there. Just hang tight for a sec.
And with that, all of the cross bracing is in. I believe I have the section itself ready to be lifted up. By the way, Lou, you finally saw... Look at the blood. The blood and sweat. Jeez, what a little crybaby. You're going to cry all day, crybaby? The blood and sweat I put into this building. But Lou, you finally sold me on those. I used to have a problem with Lou getting these funky screws that I never had the bit for until I realized I had to use them by accident a couple of times. And uh, I realized they hold a lot better and don't strip out. Get to the little hex head thing. With that done, next on our list is to put new terminals on all the winch leads. Oh boy. Those just fit on there. That's good though. Yeah, I know it would be better if I soldered these all on, but I am trying to get this lifted up before Christmas and preferably before Thanksgiving. One, one down. I know, this would be easier if I had a nice pair of wire strippers here. I know. Yes, it would. You're right. Mo better. You know, you don't want to get your finger anywhere in there. Because these dudes really bite. They got some bites to them. Okay, so I've got all my new terminal ends on. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up all the winches to batteries. Might as well check it while it's on the ground because that's where I want to know about my problems if I have them. If I'm going to have problems, I want to have them now. Now, I also have washers to put on these. I'm not going to put them on right now because this is just a test run. We'll be fine. Second. That was one of my neighbors.
All the batteries are hooked up now. I'll start with number one. So I've got six remotes here. I'll start with number one and find out where number one is. Powering on good. And I'll hit extend on all of them. There's number one. So I can shut that one off. And mark that as number one. Number one. Which one was it? <laughs> I think it was that one, but kind of want to make sure. Winch one. Winch two. I'm assuming that's down on the end. Yep. All right, so all the winches are working. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect them all. I leave the hardware for each battery on each battery. Go ahead and add the washers. And uh, then we'll start putting these babies on the posts. 